Videoscope Productions, bringing forth creative achievements we want the world to see. And now, Videoscope Productions proudly presents Window on a World Majestic, a new rockumentary on the music, movies, and messages of timeless musicians Benjamin, Scott, and Sayers. This mural was begun in more majestic times. Stately, peaceful country fields rolled into warming seas and eternal skies. The breath of life was fresh and good and filled the spirit with awe. Even on the battlefields, Renaissance heroes held in respect their adversaries. They fought for right rather than revenge. And amid such bravery and noble cause, there was no dishonor in defeat. Later battles, contests of personal bravery and national honor were fought in England with bare fists. One practitioner, Tom Sayers, only five feet eight and a half and 149 pounds, became the greatest hero of the Victorian era. When well past his prime at 34, he agreed to meet the 25-year-old, much taller and stronger American heavyweight champion, John Heenan, for the first world championship title. So much was at stake for Tom. And for England, she had lost some of her glory in the Revolutionary War and was desperately hoping for a chance to win it back. It all rested on the shoulders of the bricklayer from Brighton. to 
Sayer's right forearm was broken in the sixth round and utterly useless thereon. Yet, after 42 rounds and two agonizing hours being knocked down or thrown 25 times, Sayer's had still, by God knows what power, been able to beat the exuberant American into temporary blindness with his one good arm remaining. Victorian England, she loves you for all you've done. It was, without question, one of the greatest displays of do or die in the annals of competition. For all he wants, his country must say in no modest way. Justice is 
Take a look around. I told you I'd bring Benjamin, you here, didn't I? it's just as you said. It's Highgate Cemetery, man, North London. Sayers is buried right here. In a few minutes, I'm gonna take you. Benjamin, look. Oh. It's that, it's that guy again. Well, who the hell could it be? Come on. Tom Sayers. Yes, Ben, it's really me. You know me better than anyone else. I want to thank you, Ben, for all the things that you've done for me over the years. But I... Uh, ben, I died a peaceful death. My children were at my side. Scott, you write beautiful music. I want you to take a message into the next century, for your time is much more confusing than my own. like the great jazz drummers. I suppose they're the greatest influence. Guys like Louis Belson, Joe Murillo, and uh, certainly Buddy Rich. a legacy of drum work to this world that would take a lifetime uh, to devour. And uh, I'm happy just to have understood uh, a part of it. It's not important to show everything you know. You show part of yourself, personal part of yourself. I never know how I'm going to begin a drum solo. Uh, I never do it the same way twice. I begin somewhere that seems kind of challenging to me or interesting. Uh, and, uh, but I know where I'm going to go once I start.
Scott writes beautiful melodies, and I think that's what attracted me at first. But it's, uh, it's also the way he plays the piano, the classical influence, and uh, his technique. Uh, he's got one of those natural techniques like Chopin, where uh, the, uh, what is technically very difficult is only curious to him, not really hard. on five out of the six tunes, and I wrote lyrics on one. And uh, they just pop into his head quicker than they do mine. Scott wrote all the original compositions on the CD, except uh, one original composition that was written by Denis Boris, a French pianist composer, a friend of mine. So uh, on the CD, uh, it is Scott uh, who plays uh, both piano, all instrumentation except the drums, orchestration, and does the lead vocals. We first started writing uh, together by us recognizing that I was doing a whole tone pattern on the piano. Technically speaking, it's just, there's no half step in the scale, it's just, just six steps. And we started working off a tune like that first, and it, it may have been uh, play a wider variety of styles on his hi-hat. When he plays, he, he gets hundreds of different tone qualities out of one cymbal. One day I came across a uh, boxing, the history of boxing. It talked about bare-knuckled fighting that I maybe saw in a movie somewhere or heard on TV. And I thought, I ha well, what is this all about? And I, I opened a couple of books on it and saw old illustrations and read stories of some of these people that no one ever talked about before. It was fascinating. When I came across the picture of Tom Sayers and the caption under it, which read something like, uh, Little Tom Sayers, they called him the Little Wonder, only five foot eight, 150 pounds, and uh, eventually fought the greatest fight in history, uh, the international, first international combat for a world championship against the American John Heenan. I had to read on, and the more I studied, the more I realized that Tom Sayers was one of those special human beings. Uh, he was a simple man, but he had something. His calling was to, to be what he was, and uh, he was just what England needed at that time a common hero, the greatest hero of the Victorian times, and uh, some believe only second to uh, the Duke of Wellington uh, in, uh, in being a hero of, of England. Of course, there's Winston Churchill. We can't deny that. But in those days, uh, it was the Duke of Wellington, and second to him, it was Tom Sayers. Arthur Gilbert is uh, an executive producer who uh, I met in uh, 1991 after I wrote The Heroes of Farnborough. Arthur has done more for the project than anyone else. Uh, that's why I, uh, I actually wrote a film about Arthur that I call The Producer. I wrote it when he was uh, on, uh, in England last year, showing our project once again to some uh, English directors and producers. It's a story of... Uh, dreams and uh, people trying to make dreams come true and uh, it encapsulates Arthur uh, who is a, a great personality. Uh, it encapsulates him very well I think. When we do the Heroes of Farnborough I hope that uh, the audience when they leave the theater will be <laughs> will be in that world they, uh, they won't be able to say much of anything. But uh, I want to bring, that's what I want to bring back in the film. It's not to show a prize fight. It's not to show what bare knuckle boxing is like. It's to bring back feelings. That's, that's what moved me. And all my readings about uh, Sayers, uh, it was the feelings that were there. It's wonderful to read. I have prize fight literature that, Nobody has, but maybe a few people in the world. But what interests me is not uh, he threw a right or a left, but it's how the men felt about Sayers. It's saying things like when Tom walked back to his corner amidst the silence, which was unusual because uh, 
It was at the end of a round. When he looked around, he saw why there was silence. Everyone was saluting him. <laughs> what can you say? Uh, he squinted uh, in the sun to see the uh, 2,000 people surrounded the ring and uh, all the English were just like saluting him. I know how they felt back then. And then to put it on film, but that's, that's why film is so nice because in film you can see this. I know how to do that, but I, I want to work with people. The person that takes this project will probably just look at it, read it, and go, uh, yeah, all right, we'll do this project. And I'll know by the way he says, uh, yeah, we'll do this project, that he felt at moments like that when people, his country is saluting him, Sayers, that that's what moved him and not something else. And these are the kind of people that will do this film. The heroes of Farnborough must be an English, if not English and European project. It has to be done in the authentic uh, style of making historical films, which England does magnificently. There are many things to learn from Tom Sayers, but uh, one of them would be, uh, if you believe in something, don't give up. Tom never gave up. Uh, he never, ever gave up. sound painters who are committed to continuing the musical landscape. Benjamin, Scott, and Sayers, two determined musicians and an all-time hero who won't settle for less than all he once gave. Next from Videoscope, in association with Pallet Productions, the staging of Chet, Monk, and Miles, Jazz to the Third Power, a jazz opera in three acts. From Chetty, about the life and loves of legendary trumpeter Chet Baker, to the mystery of Monk, the enigmatic and amazing jazz pianist, Thelonious Monk. And finally, the mastery of Miles, honoring the one and only Miles Davis, whose revolutionary trumpet work was always miles ahead. Chet, Monk, and Miles, starring Jack and Jerome, slated for development in Europe. I loved it. It took me back to the caves in Paris in my youth. Video Scope Productions, bringing forth creative achievements we want the world to see.